So let's get started with shimming. In our spectrum window, we see the signal position is close to 1000 Hz. We'll need to adjust its position so it appears in the frequency range of plus 200 to plus 500 Hz. We can move the signal by adjusting the transmit frequency. Since the signal appears at approximately plus 900 Hz, and I would like it to be closer to plus 200 Hz, I need to add 700 Hz to the transmit frequency. So I'll need to change the fourth decimal place. Therefore, I'll change my current transmit frequency of 44.14957 MHz to 44.15027 MHz. Then I'll execute the AutoShim script by clicking Start Run. Let's zoom into the signal by adjusting the min and max frequency to plot values from plus or minus 2000 Hz to plus or minus 1000 Hz. Let's execute the AutoShim script once more. It looks like we've done a good job positioning our signal close to the target of 200 Hz. Now let's shim our instrument. I'll uncheck the test run box, navigate to the start run button and click it. While our instrument is shimming, let's examine the information scrolling by in the text window at the bottom. First we see a series of initialization parameters, such as bandwidth and signal decimation, sample period and FID duration, and pulse sequence duration. The pair of lines just below these data fields displays the initial coil values which the auto shim script will adjust. The relaxed or equilibrium spectrum peak height appears on the second line. This value is discarded from evaluation. The shim settings will be adjusted by the auto shim script by some fractional amount of the increment step sizes we indicated in the linear and quadratic increment parameter fields above. The sign and size of the step taken is within our initial parameter value. How the step size and sign are adjusted is determined by the simplex algorithm after evaluation of the spectrum peak height. This information is repeated after every pulse executed during shimming. The sequence of lines below this pair repeats the shim value and spectrum peak height information, but now includes a third line indicating that processing of data is completed and that the script is waiting the remainder of the T1 delay before executing the next pulse. The time between pulses is determined by the T1 recovery delay, and all Fourier transform processing and data transferring from the instrument to the web browser user interface must be completed within the T1 time frame. The second series of data indicates the beginning of the evaluation phase of the AutoShim script. This spectrum peak height is our starting point, and it is the value we are trying to improve upon. When an improvement in this value is achieved, the AutoShim script retains the corresponding coil values, assigns the associated spectrum peak height as the new best value, and continues to explore in that direction. We can keep track of the script's progress by monitoring the best spectrum peak height value, which appears after each iteration. When we perform a full shim, we optimize the three linear and five quadratic shim coils, and for any given iteration of the simplex algorithm, there are up to eight possible coil adjustments or cycles. However, on average, there are approximately 2.5 cycles per duration. You can see an example of this behavior between iterations 24 and 27, where only one coil adjustment per iteration was made. Let's check the progress of our shim so far. We started at a spectrum peak height of approximately 455,000, and now we're at approximately 478,000 after 30 iterations. For my instrument, the goal is a relaxed spectrum peak height of around 550,000. If we choose to abort the script right now, the best values obtained so far would be written to the shim electronics. The shim parameter user interface field would open up, and the new optimized values would replace the old shim values. It is important to note that the shim values will only be overwritten if an improvement has been made during execution of the auto shim script, or if one manually adjusts the shim values and executes the auto shim script. When shimming, it is advised to set the maximum number of iterations to 100 and to allow the auto shim script to run to completion. While aborting the auto shim script early has its advantages, such as when the best possible optimized shim has already been achieved prior to reaching the maximum number of iterations, one runs a risk in aborting the script too early. It is to your advantage to allow the auto shim script to run to completion. Returning to the scrolling text, let me comment on the information contained in the line Processing Complete. When executing either the auto shim or one pulse scripts, the Fourier transform of the complex data acquired is performed during the T1 delay. 
If we want consistent evaluation of the spectrum peak height, we need to make sure all data processing is completed within the T1 delay we set. If a process time extension occurs, the excited protons will have relaxed further and the signal intensity will potentially be larger and not comparable to other pulses. Processing time is affected by the number of points we acquire, by the maximum time to plot and by the maximum points to plot parameters. For shimming, the T1 delay should be set to 8 seconds. Acquisition points to 1,000, maximum points to plot can be set to its maximum value of 1,000 points, and the maximum time to plot can be set to its maximum value of 250 milliseconds. Setting these values properly will prevent the script from experiencing process extension delays. Now that the AutoShim script is completed, let's evaluate our FID and spectrum. First, let's take note of the optimized spectrum peak height of 525,000. That's a pretty good value for my cartridge. Recall that our goal is approximately 550,000. So what's the difference? The lower signal intensity after shimming has to do with the fact that the proton signal is not a fully relaxed one. Remember, we're pulsing the RF coil every 8 seconds, but water protons do not fully relax back to their equilibrium magnetization within that time period. So long as the recycle time between pulses is fixed, we don't have to wait for the protons to fully relax when we shim. If we wait about 30 seconds after the auto shim script ends, our water protons will have fully relaxed back to equilibrium. And if we execute a test run, the spectrum peak height we obtain will be comparable to the test report value. The FID looks quite good. It has the appearance of a slowly damped sine wave. The FID displays here only the real or absorptive component of the complex data in the time domain. When we shim, we're trying to make homogeneous the magnetic field volume around the RF coil, within which is our sample. As we improve the magnetic field homogeneity, our signal becomes stronger and the signal decay rate slows. We can see in our FID that at 250 milliseconds we still have about 50% of our signal intensity. The more signal intensity we have, the better is our shim. And that is what we're trying to achieve when we shim. A Fourier transform of the complex data produces a spectrum of our signal in the frequency domain. When monitoring our spectrum, we look for symmetry in our signal as well as intensity. Signal resolution is determined by many factors, both instrumental and chemical. And when shimming, we improve our signal resolution and sensitivity by maximizing the intensity and minimizing the asymmetry of our signal. Let's finish our shimming procedure by saving our shim values to a file. If we click the abort run button or the auto shim script has run to completion, the shims user interface will appear. This user interface will not appear unless there is an improvement in the shim currents. Let's navigate to the shim name field and provide a file name that is descriptive of our shim. I like to use my initials, date, magnet temperature, and serial value in case I want to save other shim files today. By clicking the Save button, these shim values will be written to a file which will be stored on our instrument. We can access this file by navigating to and clicking the Files button. This loads the Files page. Scrolling down to the Shims section, we can see the file we just saved. I can access this file by clicking it. Once the page refreshes, we can see our saved shim values. We now have the option to download the file for storage on our computer by clicking the Download Shims button. The file is now in the download directory on my computer, and we can open it like any other text file. We can also choose to delete the shim file by clicking the Delete These Shims button. I'm going to select No in this case. Or we can reload the shim values into the Run Page user interface by clicking the Use These Shims at Run button. This will automatically open the Run Page and make the shims active for whichever script was used last. And in our case, this would be the auto shim script. If I execute a test run, these shim parameters will be written to the shim electronics, overwriting previously stored values. But in this case, these are the same shim values since we just saved them to this file. Since it's been at least 30 seconds, the spectrum peak height we obtained is a relaxed value and comparable to the test report. Our goal was to achieve a value of 550,000, and after shimming, we obtained 554,000. This unit is shimmed and ready to go. The maintenance shimming procedure described here uses very robust settings that will work in all cases. If your instrument is left powered on all the time, and you shim it regularly, you may find that you can get the same results with a quicker procedure 
where you only adjust the three gradient shims X, Y, and Z, and only run 30, 40, or 50 iterations. You do this by setting the linear increments to 0.002, the quadratic increments to 0.0, .0 and the maximum iterations to 50. If you get into the habit of gradient-only shimming, be sure to still run the full maintenance shim at least weekly, or whenever the unit has been moved or the power has been cycled. In this video, we explored the topic of shimming using the AutoShim script. We described various parameters, their meaning and optimum values for shimming. We examined the text display in the scrolling text window, as well as the time and frequency domain plots. After you're familiar with your system, you'll find that keeping your unit in good shim is very simple. You just load the AutoShim script, adjust the center frequency, and hit the Start Run button. Remember, there is a detailed description of the shimming process in the System Maintenance section of the PicoSpin 45 User Manual, under the heading titled Shimming. This documentation is located on the Documentation section of the Support page of our website at www.picospin.com. Both HTML and PDF versions of the documentation are available.